Hello everyone, I'm Jacob Kaufman, I'm the Nerd in the Street, and today we are unboxing the Asus Strix Radeon RX Vega 56. Okay everybody, so you may have seen my recent video unboxing a Sonnet external GPU box. In fact, you may be able to hear it working away right back here. If you can hear it, my apologies. But it is currently rendering scenes in Blender right now, along with the help of the NVIDIA 650 Ti Boost that's sitting in it right now. So when I got this thing, I wasn't sure if it was going to work with Linux. Uh, it turned out it was just plug and play. I plugged it into my computer, did not even have to restart or anything. Blender detected the second GPU immediately and let me use it to render. Now we're throwing another wrench into the equation because this Vega 56 is an AMD graphics card and my laptop's internal graphics are Nvidia. So I don't know if that's gonna work. I don't know how hard it will be to get set up. If you already know things about graphics cards, you know why that would be difficult to get set up. If you don't know anything about graphics cards, basically AMD and Nvidia are two different companies, so I'm not sure if those two cards are going to work together. I don't know how the drivers are going to interact in Linux especially. The technology here is rapidly changing, so it's hard to find reliable information online about it. But I picked this thing up from Micro Center today. I can always return it if it doesn't work. I got the Vega 56 rather than the 64 because A, it's slightly cheaper for almost the same amount of performance, and B, the 550 watt power supply that comes with the breakaway box only supports up to the Vega 56. It does not support the higher power requirements of the Vega 64. But this card is no slouch. This is part of AMD's top of the line product line right now. And uh, so yeah, I'm pretty excited about it. This is the Asus Strix, like I said, version of it. It is, I believe it's overclocked stock a little bit. It comes with this great three fan cooling design that I've heard a lot of great things about online. Obviously I research everything I buy before I buy it quite extensively. So you can see on the top of the box here, uh, just says that name of the product. Here you can see the nice micro center sticker on it. Uh, on the back we've got some features and this thing has two HDMI ports and a display port and a DVI port which is nice. It's actually really nice that it's got a DVI port because that means I can plug my laptop into DVI in the future through this if I need to but for now I'll just be using this as a compute device for rendering Blender scenes with OpenCL. So not going to be actually plugging any displays into this. I'm not using it for gaming. My laptop already has a 1080 in it an NVIDIA GTX 1080, so this is just going to be for rendering Blender scenes. We got some things here about the Asus cooler that comes on this thing. We've got uh, information. This is, it's got RGB functionality. Probably won't be able to control that through Linux, but we'll see. Each side of the box is pretty plain. We've just got uh, that, and then other side's the same. There's the back a little bit closer up if you couldn't see it before. And then on the bottom here, we've just got system requirements. I'm pretty sure we meet those. The only thing we wouldn't meet would be an operating system. Yeah, they say Windows is required. That's wrong. I know this thing will work with Linux. Uh, the question is just whether or not it will work in tandem with the NVIDIA card that's in the laptop. But without further ado, I will grab my knife and open it up here. And we will open this box. All right, so how do we want to attack this thing? We've got seals on this side. One is here. Looks like it goes this way. All right, the other one's over here. We probably don't need to open up both sides, but we will cut the seals on both sides anyway, just in case, as long as we keep everything intact, just in case we need to return this card, they can uh, stick some more seals on it if they need to. So we'll open up one side here. All right, this is actually the first AMD graphics card that I've ever owned. The last one would have been the integrated graphics on my old HP Pavilion laptop, but that was back when they were ATI, um, and that was a, a low-end graphics chip that was in that laptop. It was not a dedicated card or a dedicated chip like this thing has on it. All right, and we are actually going to open up both sides of the box. I see how this is going. So what we'll do to unbox this, this is why we do unboxings, is to show you how to open these things. Uh, we're going to push from one side, the box will come out the other side. There we go. So now we can grab that. We can hit our microphone with the cardboard. All right. So we'll set the empty cardboard shell out of the camera shot. And on either side of this thing, we've got the Strix logo, which is cool. Um, obviously, once again, not using this thing for gaming, using it for rendering. But the Vega cards are actually very good at compute from, uh, from what I have read online. They are 
sort of designed to be compute cards, really. AMD just doesn't have the money to run two product lines like NVIDIA does. We'll open this up. All right. I have unboxed ASUS graphics cards before, NVIDIA ones. Um, so yeah. Here at the top, we've got... Ah, uh, this is the size of a CD, so it will probably have drivers on it that I won't use because I'll be using the open source AMD drivers and maybe some proprietary ones. We'll see what the deal is once we get in. The way I understand it, AMD, uh, they've got great open source drivers, but there might be a proprietary add-on I can add on top of the open source drivers um, to increase performance. So we'll see about that in a bit. So we'll set the cover off the side. Everything in here was just this speed setup, which we will duly ignore. And then, uh, like I said, we've got graphics drivers for Windows. That would be useful if you're installing a Windows machine that's not connected to the internet so it can't auto-download. Oh, this also comes with Google Chrome and the Google Toolbar, which is not, uh, you know, nobody wants Google Toolbar. Some people would want Google Chrome. This comes with XSplit in case you want to pay for something instead of using a superior product like OBS that's free. We'll throw all that off to the side, though, and here we'll take off the top piece of styrofoam. And in here is the card itself. Underneath it, in this little slot here, we've got cables. Looks like this is a power cable. This is a converter from an eight pin power cable down to two six pins. We might or might not need to use this. I'll see in a moment. I don't want to take it out of the bag if we don't need to use it, because like I said, don't know if we'll need to return this thing or not. This is Velcro. Two strips of Velcro for cable management, I guess. Seems like a lot of Velcro for just these cables, but you know, some people, gamers like their cable management much more than I do. And in here, we've got the card itself. We will sort of grab it up out of here. Actually, we'll pull at the top. There's a little bit of, all right. So this entire styrofoam piece can be removed from the box. Uh, there is nothing else in the box, as you can see there. But we will lower that right back in. So we will continue with what I was doing, pulling this up. Man, this graphics card is uh, pretty big, I've got to say. Let me just, okay, good. This will fit inside of my, my external GPU box. I had to check because this is way bigger than I was expecting, I've got to admit, which is, it, that's, that's cool. That is perfectly all right. I hope the performance is big as well. So there's the Strix logo once again. Nothing on the bottom of this box. I'm gonna set this box off to the side. Here is the card inside of an anti-static bag that you should definitely save in case you ever need to transport the card. And what's the cleanest way to open this? Well, it looks like uh, looks like the bracket here on this end of the card has already poked through the anti-static bag. So I guess we will open up the bag on this end. We're just going to, hmm. oh, actually we don't need to tear this bag open at all. Um, Oh, okay, okay, here we go. So there's a piece of tape on the bottom of the card. You can tell I don't unbox graphics cards often. Um, so there's a piece of tape here, and you can see through the bag there, the, uh, the chip would be right under there, the main chip driving this thing. Just trying to get that tape up off of the plastic. I'm gonna set this down. Oh, here we go. It's easier if we go at it from the point where the, uh, the plastic overlaps. There we go, okay. We will fold that tape over itself there. Now we can slide the card out on its long end, as you're supposed to do. Okay. Man, this card is very big. This is the biggest graphics card I think I've ever handled. I've handled giant NVIDIA Quadros at work. I've handled uh, some very high-end GTX 9 series cards in the past, but I think this is the biggest graphics card I have ever handled. This is the bottom, the, the boring looking side does have some uh, plastic we can pull off of it here. And I will save that once again in case I need to return this, but really hoping that's not the case. This is the first time I've seen a graphics card where the bottom, the bottom's always uh, a little bit more boring than the top, but the bottom of this thing actually has a metal plate over it, um, not just exposed circuitry like I would normally see on a graphics card. So that's interesting. At the top here, we've got the cover over the PCI Express slot, we will take that off there. All right, and that's where it plugs in to your computer or breakout box, is that gold stuff right there. You don't wanna to touch it, okay? We'll just go all around this thing. <laughs> this uh, inside side is pretty boring. This side's pretty boring. Um, on the side that would face outside of your computer, if you're putting this in a desktop computer, we've got a DVI port. Like I said, should be two DisplayPort and two HDMI as well. So 
you're covered with external monitors. Um, and then here, there's a little piece of, uh, of, of plastic over the center of each one of these fans. So we can uh, peel those off one by one. There goes one. A little difficult to get this plastic off. There goes the middle one. And then on the right side, same thing. All right, and this is obviously the side of the graphics card that looks the coolest. Um, this thing does light up. It's got RGB lights in it. Like I said, probably not gonna be able to control those under Linux, but we'll see what color they are by default. We've got the Asus logo and the Strix logo on the sides. This thing should be cool with all of this, uh, this thermal apparatus on top of it. So at this point, I'm going to throw it in my breakaway box and we'll see if it works. And I'll let you know what happens in a few seconds here. All right, everyone, and it's actually about a week later. I did get that Vega 56 working in my Sonnet breakaway box, and it is working right now on my laptop. I've been rendering things with it in Blender using OpenCL. It did take me a lot longer than I thought because in order to get OpenCL working, I did have to install AMD's proprietary graphics driver component, and on Arch Linux, that was a huge pain in the butt to do, but I got it working. I am going to make a separate video on how to do that, but it's outside the scope of just an unboxing video because it is going to take a while to show you. So stay tuned for an upcoming video on how to get a complete external graphics solution working on Linux. For now though, let me know if you have any other questions about the card, and that's all I have to show you today. So I'm Jacob Kaufman, I'm the Nerd of the Street, and I'll see you guys later. Bye.